Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another session. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, so can one of us, uh, maybe Salome, can you lead us in prayer, please? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that done, our Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise, our Father. Thank you for the stay, our Father, that you added, our Father, in our lives, our Father. God, I pray for Pastor, and you give him glory, our Father. God, you help him while he's leading us in today, our Father. You give him wisdom what to speak and what not to, our Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. God, you bless each and every one over here who's there and who's about to join, our Father. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. So, uh, uh, we've come to the last chapter. Uh, yesterday, we completed chapter eight. We looked at, uh, you know, how we can pursue him, uh, even as we are praying and seeking after God. God is God who is responds to hungry hearts and a heart that is passionate, a heart that is persistent, a heart that is compassionate uh, towards the people around us. And uh, uh, we looked at uh, what to also pray uh, when we are praying for revival. <clears throat> Uh, pray for repentance, uh, pray for more of God, the manifestation of His Spirit, pray for the salvation of the lost, transformation of communities. And also, it's very important to engage in fasting and prayers. There will be times, uh, you know, God will put in our hearts to fast and pray. Now, um, uh, the whole aspect of fasting and prayer is, uh, you know, it's a whole subject altogether. There's lots to learn about that. Uh, but Isaiah very briefly, he describes in his book and he says, uh, what is the true fast? What, is, what does it mean to fast truly? Meaning uh, it's not about, you know, uh, a target. It's not about, you know, just because somebody is doing it, I'm doing it. No, uh, the reason that we want to fast and pray is because we want to be changed just like God, like Jesus, just to become more like him. And, and out of that, uh, will you know flow out the miracles and God begins to answer our prayers and all of that, right? So uh, we'll move into chapter nine. This will be our last chapter, um, and then uh, I think what we will do is next Monday uh, we should be able to wrap up on this subject. And uh, uh, I know it's a it's a long uh, it's been a long semester, meaning. A uh, lot of material that we went through, a lot of revivals, and uh, right from the first century church to now. Uh, but it's always good to go back and refresh your memories. Uh, maybe you know, pick up on revivals that you like to learn more about. You can go online, uh, read about them, and. Uh, uh, these will help us, uh, you know, we can get encouraged, we can build our faith, and also we can use them, uh, you know, uh, in teaching others about the importance of uh, uh, pursuing God for revival. Right. So chapter 9, uh, page 101 in my book, uh, stewarding re revival to host the presence and, and manifest his glory. Now, there will be some points that are repeated, so I'll just go a little quick in those areas, but we are stewards of what God entrusts us with, right? So, for example, if uh, just take a small example, right? Uh, um, uh, example, we buy a guitar right, or an instrument. Now, we are we've got the guitar or the instrument. We need to take care of that, right? We need to be good stewards of it. Now, for example, we buy a guitar or buy an instrument, and then after we buy it, we don't take good care of it. Right? Uh, w w what's going to happen? Uh, maybe those, if it's a guitar, the strings are going to rust off, and uh, you know the we need to make sure that we change the strings at the right time, have it tuned, uh, clean the guitar every now and then. Now we need to be good stewards of of what God has given us. Right. Now, maybe God, maybe not all of us are our own, uh, you know, started our own ministry or, uh, uh, you know, uh, but here's the thing, whatever God has given us, whatever he has entrusted to us, we need to be good stewards, right? If you are a mother, 
if you are a wife, if you are a husband or a father, we need to be good stewards of you know of what God has entrusted us with. Not only material blessings, not only in the natural you know the material things that we have around us, but also in spiritual aspects, we are to be good stewards. Right. Uh, so if God entrusts us with something, he expects us to look after it, to nurture it. Right. And so this includes spiritual leadership entrusted to us. Right. When when we are in the ministry, maybe we are serving in different capacities within the church community. Uh, do it as good stewards. Right. Uh, it's not whether, OK, hey, peep, this person is watching or the other person is watching. It's not about that. Being a good steward is being accountable to God. Right. Yes, we need to be accountable to man. That's why we also have leaders above us. Uh, but remember that whatever we do in our life and wherever we serve, whether it's in the church or in the small group, do it as good stewards of God, right? Uh, good stewards is not only managing, about managing well what has been given to us, but it is also about multiplying and passing it on to generations, right? Now, we did a lot of these revivals. We saw that, you know, these men of God were great. Men and women of God did wonderful works. They, you know, they stewarded the revival well, but they, towards the end, they did not multiply it. They did not succeed that revival to the next generation, right? Now, that's, these are lessons that we can learn. Even as God, you know, uh, pours out his spirit upon us in different measures, we are to be, <coughs> sorry, good stewards of the Holy Spirit, right? So let's look at this example from, uh, Matthew chapter 13, 24, verse 24 to verse 30. Uh, can one of us please read that? Uh, Matthew 13, 24 to verse 30. Uh, Christopher, if, if you can go ahead and read that. Uh, yes, Pastor. Yes. Matthew 13, 24, verse 30. Another parable he put forth to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servant of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not so good seed in your field. How then does it have tares? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no lest while you gather up the tares, you will also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but to gather the wheat into my barn. Amen. Thank you, Christopher. So here Jesus is giving a wonderful uh, example here of separating the wheat from the chaff, right? And here uh, it's a wonderfully, you know, the Lord Jesus is, uh, you know, putting forth this example. He's saying, okay, he tells his workers, go put some good seed in the ground, right? But the enemy comes in between, puts some tears, and then those begin to grow. Now, all of a sudden, they're wondering, hey, uh, the workers are saying, uh, we put good seed on the ground. Where did these tears come from? And it is, is, it's interesting to see that uh, the master knew, okay, the enemy has come and sowed these stairs among us, right? Among the whole plantation. Now, what are we getting at? <clears throat> when there is a move of God, there will be, uh, you know, uh, manifestations, a mixed 
fleshly manifestations of the work uh, of the enemy, right? Uh, meaning there will, <clears throat> there will be the genuine, there will be the fleshly manifestations. How, 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 how do we, you know, look at these two? Now, it may look the same. Remember, the enemy, uh, you know, he, he knows how to duplicate things, right? Uh, and so it may look very identical. It may look exactly the same. Uh, maybe it is, you know, uh, uh, for example, uh, you know, if in cer certain places, if there's an outpouring, maybe there's there are people who want to gain attention to themselves or they want a place of superiority, right? Or you know this feeling of hey i'm more spiritual than you i am holier than thou kind of a attitude now these are wrong reasons and wrong motivations within a move of god right now here's the interesting thing the worker said uh, okay master we'll go and we'll you know pull off these stairs you know so that the good uh, uh, the wheat remains and the good plantation remains uh, it sounds like a good idea right uh, it sounds like a good idea, but the master was wise enough and he said, no, no, if we pull it off, even the wheat is going to come along with that. And then the whole, you know, the whole plantation is going to be a waste. But let's wait for the harvest. Let's wait for the time uh, when everything's ready for the harvest. We will pull them all out. Then we'll separate the tears. And then we will separate the wheat. The tares, we will take it. We will burn it away. And the wheat, we will put it into the barns. And so the owner was mindful that he should not uproot anything, even during those initial stages. Instead, wait for the fruit. Wait for the harvest. It's a wonderful example. Sometimes, you know, in our zeal for God, uh, we may end up being in a hurry. Or we may end up uh, trying to, you know, uh, correct people, and we may end up doing it in the wrong way at the wrong time. So sometimes, you know, we really need the spirit of discernment, or we need the wisdom of God. Sometimes it's very good to just keep quiet, right? Uh, uh, just stay quiet and prayerfully uh, ask the Lord what needs to be done. Right and and wait. Let let God work in those midst. Wait and see the fruit, and you know that's when it'll be. It's wise to make decisions. Let me share this uh, incident that happened many years ago uh, here in the city of Mangalore. Uh, uh, not to put down anyone, but this is something that happened, and uh, 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 it could happen to any one of us, right? Uh, there was this elderly couple, right, uh, who stayed. In the city of Mangalore, and uh, they began to attend our church. Uh, you know, uh, they've they've retired, they've completed their work, and they retired, and uh, they would come every Sunday. But one thing I noticed: uh, every Sunday, right from the second Sunday onwards, they became very comfortable with the people around. So that was good. Uh, but one thing I noticed is, whenever I heard them talk. You know, they would talk about, you know, uh, this other pastor or they would be talking about this other person, what he did, what she did. It was more like, you know, uh, uh, kind of gossiping kind of a thing. Now, they are really elder to me and uh, uh, and I really wanted to go and tell them, right, uh, you know, let's avoid this. And uh, because in you know, none of our church folks really, you know, we've maintained it after a long time. You know, a lot of hard work. We've maintained it in a way that we don't talk about things. Uh, but, you know, I, I just kept quiet. And uh, this went on for a couple of Sundays. Uh, and then I was asking God, God, I know that if I confront them, uh, they're going to get upset. And I know that they will eventually say, you know, uh, I'm not going to come to the church and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was asking God, God, give me the wisdom. How do I tell them? Because I can't keep quiet also. Because if I keep quiet, then it's like I'm not protecting the church. Uh, and um, I said, okay, let's wait. Let's see. Uh, let's give them another month. Let's see if there is a change. Uh, let's see if there's fruit uh, from what they've coming and learning over the past, uh, you know, two months or so. 
and just kept quiet. And somewhere around the third or the fourth month, you know, uh, this gentleman, he came up to me and he said, uh, you know what, Pastor, I have been wanting to tell you this. Um, one thing I've noticed is in your church, whenever we talk about people, nobody talks back about anything. They just keep quiet. And when we were having our family prayers, the Holy Spirit very clearly told us to stop gossiping and talking about others. So we are very sorry for speaking and talking about other people, other pastors. Um, no, and we want to apologize uh, uh, if we have created any problem, if there's anything that if we have hurt people's sentiments here. But uh, we assure you that we will not go. We will not repeat this. And and I was so, uh, you know, I was so comforted because I thought to myself, what if I had, you know, confronted that person uh, immediately? Right? Maybe they would have said, hey, oh, oh, what? I never said anything. It's just been oh, two weeks here. I'm here. Oh, oh, the, the reaction could have been bad. Uh, but, you know, uh, I thank God that uh, they themselves understood. Now, there will be times they will not understand. What I'm trying to get at is wait, give some time, give people time, right? And see the fruit in their lives. If there is, there's no fruit that is bearing in their lives, then go ahead, confront and uh, make things right. But we must wait for uh, people to see the fruit in their lives. What the spirit, what is of the spirit will bear genuine and lasting fruit, but man, fleshly manifestations will not. Right. So in due time, it will it will just be shown in in, in people's lives. Right. Uh, uh, if, if there's somebody who's always, you know, praying, seeking God, uh, living in honor, we will see the fruit. Uh, it is obvious we will see good fruit. But if we see people trying to make up things, you know, trying to make up prophecies or, uh, you know, fleshly manifestations just to go along, we will see the fruit. Right? We may not see it immediately, we may not understand it immediately, but eventually it will come out because the Lord himself said, we shall be known by our fruit. Right? So uh, so give people time, uh, but also be discerning. Ask the Holy Spirit, ask God, when do I you know, step in? How should I go about doing this? Uh, the master here in this passage, he had the spirit of discernment. He had the wisdom. He said, no, no, let's wait. Uh, I don't want to destroy the entire field which uh, we have struggled for, but let's wait. And when the harvest is ready, we'll do the needful. We'll pull off the uh, tares, we'll pull off the wheat, and we'll do according to it. Uh, and so it's very important that we do that. Two, when we're stewarding a visitation, we need to make that a habitation of God, meaning God wants to dwell among his people. Yes, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come, minister to people, and go away, right? But now, in the New Covenant, the Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit is with us always. And so it's not only about a visitation of God. We want to pray for a habitation of God, right? So, for example, we are praying for healing. We are praying for deliverance. We are praying for a, a, you know, a, a move of God in our midst. It, it's great when God does it, uh, you know, one Sunday, there's a powerful move of God. Uh, but what we also want to pray for is, Lord God, continue this. Let this be a habitation day after day or week after week. Uh, maybe it's in your life group setting or your church setting. We pray, God, let, there be, let this be a habitation. Let it be a continual thing going on and on. Like, you know, one of the things we do at uh, ABC is we... After our sermon, we spend some time in ministry, right? Ministering to people. Uh, so we probably, uh, you know, sing a song and then we uh, pray for healing, pray for deliverance. God gives a probably word of knowledge or a prophetic word. We spend time ministering to them. Now, there are many times people are healed, uh, people are delivered, people are restored, people are, uh, you know, their hearts are comforted. Now, we don't want it to be, okay, just to say, hey, you know what, that, that Sunday was a wonderful service. Yes, that's great. Uh, but we want it to be a habitation, right? 
Uh, and how do we make it a habitation? We need to teach people. We as leaders need to train other people, right? Uh, if the leadership is well prepared, what we can do is we can ensure that the house of God is maintained as a dwelling place of God, right? Um, so how do we, you know, maintain this house of God as a dwelling place of God? First one, keep the house clean. No sin in the house, right? Uh, we need to encourage people to keep away from the things of this world. Don't let the things of this world uh, come into the church and these fleshly manifestations, uh, pride, jealousy, anger, backbiting, uh, all these things, right? We, we as a church need to keep away from it. Let's keep the church clean, right? Meaning uh, don't point fingers at others. Let's not say, okay, he's, you know, this person did this and this person did that. Uh, let's keep the house clean. Paul writes to the Ephesians, he says, uh, do not give uh, the enemy a point of entry. Right? Uh, don't, uh, in other words, says, uh, don't give him uh, a foothold lest he take the entire room. Right? Uh, yes, Christopher, I see you raised your hand. Go ahead, Christopher. Yes, uh, this is actually in, in reference to um, the earlier passage, uh, Matthew 13. Um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I guess bring up this point about uh, does, uh, and a question about whether it applies also to ourselves, where um, there may be some, uh, you know, uh, you know, like a like a thorn in our flesh, like you know, like Paul had. Uh, obviously, not a, not a very you know, not a very powerful thorn, but you know, something that that is not. Uh, you know, there is not good in us, and um, you know we kind of focus on that, not and sort of you know forget about um, you know the, all the good that we that we have, and um, you know continue down that path and you know not really progress. Uh, so there may be a time that you know uh, you know we we um, we continue uh, you know with the good in us realizing that there is a thorn and at the right time it, it gets uh, you know it gets it gets uh, you know taken away and uh, you know burnt so i just wanted to bring up that point and you know get your uh, get your view on this uh, pastor yes uh, that's good that's a good question christopher yes it could be applied to both but uh, so uh, when we look at the parables, uh, Christopher, what we see is we have something called as a kingdom parables, and then we have the regular parables, right? Uh, so uh, this is, you know, uh, uh, a kingdom parable. Uh, so wherever we see a kingdom parable, it's, it's more likely towards uh, the kingdom of God, meaning the church as a whole, right? Now, we, I'm not saying we can't apply it to ourselves. Yes, we can. Uh, but then there are also the parables which are uh, more you know, related for us, like, for example, the parable of the lost son, right? The parable of the lost sheep um, uh, and, and plenty of other parables. So uh, here on in context, what uh, Jesus is trying to say is uh, uh, wherever, you know, there is even the parable of the sower is, is in context to, uh, again, a person, their personal life and as a community as a whole. Uh, uh, and so, yes, uh, Christopher, so this could be applied to our life as well, wherein, you know, uh, there are things in our life and, uh, uh, you know, the, we all go through those, you know, those thorns or those uh, tears that may be there in our, uh, in our lives. But, uh, but the point is, what we can do is, Christopher, look at it and see, okay, is this bearing fruit in my life, right? Uh, is it something that is helping me? You know, one, 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 let me give you this example, a young man, a young boy, a college student, um, he's a pastor's son and he came to our church and uh, he's from a different state and he came to our church and uh, very, very fervent boy serving, you know, he's a pastor's kid. So he's there on Sundays uh, serving in the church. Uh, he asked me, uh, Pastor, is it wrong to listen to, uh, you know, uh, these uh, secular songs, they just love songs uh, or, or you know, just regular secular songs. There is nothing wrong. The, the lyrics are not bad. The, uh, the videos are not 
uh, vulgar. The lyrics are not uh, against God. It's just regular songs, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, love songs and they make you feel good. Now, he asked me, is it a sin? Uh, I said, here's what I said, right? And I could be, I may be wrong, but uh, I felt that, uh, you know, this was something that he needed to hear. I asked him, I told him, it's not wrong if you want to listen to that. If you feel that it's not, it doesn't have any uh, bad lyrics or unholy words and uh, the videos are not uh, uh, vulgar and they don't, are not explicit, if you want to listen to it, go ahead and listen to it. And he was very happy. But then I asked him, is that what you're listening to? Is it bearing fruit in your life? Is it something that is drawing you closer to God? So his answer was no. Uh, is it bearing fruit in your life? No, I, I get some kind of peace in my heart. Uh, you know, after a long day's work, listen to the songs. Okay. But is it bearing fruit? Is that peace staying for a longer time? Or is it or after the song is over, the peace is gone? Right? You, and is it bearing fruit in your life? And, 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 I, and he said, no, it's not bearing fruit, nor is it giving me like a constant peace. But I just feel like doing it. Right? So uh, I remember telling him, now, if it's not bearing fruit in your life, if it's not drawing you closer to God, then you need to make the decision to know whether that is a wheat or a tear in your heart, in your life, right? You can let it grow together, right? We can listen to gospel songs. We can listen to these songs also. Both are growing together, right? Uh, nothing's, nothing wrong is happening, right? You've got the wheat, you've got the tear also. Both are growing together, right? Uh, but is it helpful? Is it helping you grow into more of God's likeness, into more of God? What is it that it does to you? So, you know, the more I probed him, the more I questioned, the more I you know, just began to ask him all these. He came to an understanding that, hey, uh, I can stay without this, right? Uh, because it's not something that I have to have in my life. I can stay away from it. Uh, if I want to draw closer to God, and if I want to do something more for God in my life, I'll have to let go of it. I'll have to take it and burn it away. If I don't, doesn't mean God is going to condemn me and bring, you know, whole kind of, uh, uh, you know, condemnation on me and say, you are a sinner and all of that. But it's just that, you know, First Corinthians chapter, uh, I think it's First Corinthians 3, uh, Paul is writing to the believers. He's saying, we will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, and he's saying, we will be saved from the fire, but our works will be tested by fire. Right? And so if, if our works are tested by fire, that which is not of God will be burnt off. We will not be rewarded for that. Only what is of God will be rewarded. So even if we don't stop, you know, we keep listening to you know, gospel songs and we are listening to secular songs. It's not that we God is going to throw us into hell, no. Uh, but on the judgment day, you know, uh, that will just be burnt off. There's no reward for that. I might as well do something where I am rewarded for. Uh, you know, so, so yes, in our personal lives also, there will be these tears that are growing within uh, good ground. Uh, and so, especially now, you know, uh, in this world that we're living in, uh, young people have access to so much of music that is around us, music and video games and so many other things that can easily, you know, uh, uh, draw our attention away from God. So it's very important that we, uh, that's a work we have to do, right? The Holy Spirit will remind us, hey, this is something that you need to get rid of. Now, me personally, uh, you know, growing up as a young boy, I used to listen to a lot of secular music. We, you know, me and my brothers, we used to listen to heavy metal and all these bands. And, uh, you know, we were always listening to bands. We would do all of this. And then once I became a believer, I would still listen to it. Uh, I used to listen to it. But then I think, oh, man, I shouldn't have wasted my time. Uh, but then this music you're listening to 10 years old, you've been playing these kind of music. It's so attractive. 
then it came a time when i had to say okay i need to stop this i need to do this and so i slowly came out of that music right uh, so christopher i hope that answers your question there will be things in our lives uh, well, but, but the tears that we have to ourselves uh, deal with and burn off from our lives it's all it's all the rewards that's it it's all about uh, whether we are growing closer to god or not so uh, christopher i hope that answers your question any no i i i understand that uh, last I, i i i i mean i i think i just i know wanted to was bring up the point about in that in that interim period of time where you know uh, you know we have uh, we have you know you know taken away i mean the the tear is just taken away from us so we just discarded completely uh there is a need to uh you know focus on the on the goodness and all the good works that we we are capable of doing because i, I find that sometimes um and it happens to me sometimes also i see it in individuals also where you know there is a lot of focus on okay you know i have this um, you know one or two tears which could be which could be in, uh, not good in, in the in the in the short term but they focus a lot on that and then you know it sort of yeah. focuses them from yeah. doing good works yeah. and um the other thing is that um, i mean i feel that you know one once that is taken away and discarded it has to be replaced with something else that is good because otherwise it's this void which 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 sort of uh, appears over there and you know generally people are uh, become uncomfortable with that you know so um i was just thinking about you know more just in that time frame of you know um uh, you know discarding it which may take you know maybe a few days it could take a month or you know a couple of months um and um where uh, we for still focus on the on the goodness and you know we we pray and you know there are the you know uh, in the uh, you know going through word of god and you know talking to other people and you know discarding that and uh, but that dis- that that period of discarding uh, may not be just one day it could it may take time so just to you know sort of focus on the on the on the goodness and uh, on on the good works and um, be able to you know move on you know uh, that's that's where that's coming from yes thank you thank you christopher yes that's wonderful too yeah there are times when you say okay you know what i did this wrong so i will not serve at all no god is like how christopher is saying he's saying uh, what he's trying to bring is that you know we all have gifts talents we have things in us that we are capable of doing and uh, god has bestowed upon us so uh, let's not only focus on okay this is wrong this is the tears in my life or these other wrong things but we also you know even as we are working on that uh, we remember that we are a work in progress we are changing glory to glory uh, so we can focus on our strengths also and say god these are the things that i'm uh, able to do and able to uh, give to your kingdom and to serve and uh, so we also you know focus on that and serve god uh, so yeah thank you so much christopher for sharing that uh, all right uh, so first one was uh, keep the house clean uh, no sin within the house uh, you know one thing we always say is uh, don't give the devil uh, the pulpit time now it's sad to see that you know a lot of churches they come on the pulpit and then they start saying oh this person did that this person did this and they talk about all the you know certain places you you know churches you the sermon starts off with the world news what all is happening around in the churches that's all not required what is the pulpit for it is to preach the word of god right and so don't give the enemy a foothold don't give him time keep the unity of the spirit the unity of the spirit uh will bring the anointing of god and uh and when you know uh, the unity of the spirit is where problems and conflicts will be solved remember acts chapter 6 uh um there's the the, the there are two kinds of uh, uh people there uh the elderly uh, people who for the serving of food uh you got the uh, you know the widows the uh, grecian jews and you got the regular jews and uh, what's happening there's division you know, all the people uh, the other jews are looked after better than what we are okay 
problem in the church. Let's resolve this. So they all sit, okay, they come up with the solution. What is the solution? We'll choose seven people full of the Holy Spirit. They will do the serving of the food and problem solved, right? There was unity in the spirit. Everyone said, okay, right? So unity of the spirit will help resolve conflicts, keeps the house clean. Three, keep a humble heart. We talked about humility the last chapter. Uh, stay away from being pride. Just be humble. Uh, look at, don't look at every, you know, if we are a leader, don't look down on people. Okay, I'm here, you are there. No, we're all the same, right? Uh, keep the Lord Jesus as the focus, uh, uh, meaning that he is the Lord. He is the uh, uh, the owner of the house. He's the leader of the house, right? We are just his steward. So we keep, we encourage people to keep their eyes fixed on Jesus, not on pastors, not on leaders, not on uh, evangelists and the healing and all of these things, which is wonderful, but our eyes need to be fixed on Jesus because he is uh, the leader, right? And contain, continue and maintain uh, prayer that fuels revival. Now, in a church community, uh, prayer is very essential, right? Uh, uh, God provides the fire and we provide the sacrifice. So as we pray, uh, as we pray, it's a sacrifice. We're saying, God, pour out your spirit, pour out your presence, right? Now, there will be times we will go into intense times of prayers. There will be times we'll go into intense times of worship. Continue that, fuel it, right? If, if that's something God is doing, fuel it, right? Uh, if, the, if, it's the, if it's worship that is, uh, you know, where God is working through worship, fuel it. If God is working you know, through prayer, fuel it, you know, meaning uh, fan it into flame or let it just increase, right? And very, very important, stay with what is important, right? In, in, in terms of the church, um, there are some things that does not change. For example, we love to see miracles. We love to see, uh, you know, the blind, see the deaf here. We love all these things, right? Uh, there will be times when, you know, there'll be gold dust or, uh, you know, angel visitations. The angel of God came and told me this and the angel told him that and all of these things. There will be testimonies within the church. Wonderful, right? Uh, praise God for those testimonies and all of these things. But our focus is not on the angels. Our focus is not on the gold dust, angel feathers, and all these. Uh, I remember one of these places, uh, seeing a couple of years back, I remember seeing this where, where they said that there were angel feathers, long kind of feathers falling off in the church. Uh, I don't remember when I saw that. It was some clip that somebody sent it to me a long time back. Um, it's wonderful for all this, but here's the thing. That should not be the focus. Now, for example, if I'm going to church, I, my mind should not be saying, oh, what if there's gold dust today? No, I've got everything wrong if I, if I think that way. Or oh, what if an angel comes and I miss the angel? No, I am going to church so that I can experience the presence of God. I can hear the word of God. I can build myself up. We are to stay with the important that is, preaching the word, winning souls, discipling them, fellowship with believers, sharing, caring, equipping the saints, going out on missions, uh, outreaches, and, and, and that's, that's, that's what it is. And as we do all this, in between we may have all these wonderful spiritual manifestations, but that is not the key. That is not... You know, it shouldn't be, okay, I, I saw the angel, so the, what the angel said only, and so we will listen to the angel. No, no, no. Uh, that is very dangerous. Stick to the word. Stick to what uh, the doctrine and the teaching of the word of God. Remember the apostles in the book of Acts? They're going about, Peter's going about, and, you know, they said, hey, Peter's coming. Uh, let's line up all the sick people uh, there, and Peter's walking there. And the shadow of Peter brings healing on all the people there. The next day, they didn't say, okay, shadow ministry or whatever. They didn't say that, right? 
they said, what do they say? Let's continue in teaching, preaching, and equipping the believers. They did not stop that. Right? Peter and John went to pray. They saw the lame man on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, front of the temple. He said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I'll give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Right? And then he rises up and walk. The next day we don't see, uh, 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 you know, kind of any new teachings going on there. Right? It was, hey, teach the word, preach the word, let it be followed up with signs, wonders, and miracles. Right? Uh, the, the sign and wonders did not cause them to formulate a new doctrine. That's the danger here. If there are angels and you know, gold dust and all of it, that's good. But do not start new doctrines with all these manifestations. If we do so, then we are at the wrong side. We, we've lost focus on what is important which is the word, which is all the other things, right? Acts 5.42 says, And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. They did not stop. No matter what miracles happened, no matter which angel came, no matter what happened, they did not stop teaching and preaching the word of God. So that's very important. That we also, in our lives, right? Uh, you know, I, I remember this man, uh, young man that I spoke to. He was so excited about the prophetic, right? He said, um, you know, he said, uh, Pastor, I want to be a prophet. I said, that's wonderful. I want to prophesy. You know, he's been watching things on YouTube and, you know, all these prophets and all these things. He said, I want to be a prophet. I want to talk into people's so I want to know, you know, I want to do this. I said, that's wonderful. You know, God's called you for that. And if you feel that that's your calling, go ahead. Uh, so what do I do, Pastor? Uh, I said, start off with reading two chapters a day and spending at least an hour in prayer. I said, one hour in prayer. And his reaction was like, oh, that's, that's going to be difficult. And uh, reading the word for how long? Said, At least two chapters. Keep half an hour. Meditate on the word of God. And it was he, you know, the next, after two weeks, he said, what happened? Are you, are you praying? Is God speaking to you? No, no, no. I could not pray. I don't think I, would, I want to be a prophet. I'll just stick with being a worship leader. You know? So emotions are there, right? Emotions and all of these things. It's good. But we need to go through the sacrifice. If we want to be some. If, we, if, if God is calling us for something, greater the call, greater the sacrifice. Right? Uh, I'm not saying you, you know, I, I told him, you know, uh, the reason I told you to pray for one hour and read the word is because uh, if the calling is so, if you want to hear from God, uh, a prof prophecy is hearing from God. So if you want to hear from God, you need to be able to hear the Father's voice. You need to understand who he is. And I know my sheep hear my voice, but there needs to be, uh, you know, that intimate relationship. And he said, but he said, no, I like the way they are, the way they just prophesy on stage and everyone are clapping and the way they said, that's all. Uh, it's not about all of that. It's the word, it's, it's, it's God. So I told him, you're losing focus. Your focus is on the people, on the prophets and not on God. Uh, and so it's very important not to lose focus. We have these, you know, in ministry, and it's sad to say that people are so entangled with those leaders. You know, they just want to be like them, right? They forget about Jesus. They want to be like this leader. While the scripture says we are the image of Christ, we need to be in the image of Christ. So we need to get those things right. right? Consolidate what is being released. Right? The word consolidate is very important, which means strengthen. Strengthen what we have. Uh, we talked about this also in the previous chapters. Uh, keep using what God is imparting in, in each of us. If we don't use it, we will lose it. Um, if God is imparting some kind of a, uh, you know, 
word of wisdom or a, a, a prophetic word. He's releasing it to you. Continue to ask more. Continue to use it. Uh, I remember the first few times, you know, I was unsure. You know, hey, is this God? I felt this in my spirit. I went to my leaders. I said, oh, "Can you help me out in this? I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. Is that me or is it? Uh, is it? Uh, is it God speaking to me? I, I'm not really sure." And so, uh, whatever God is imparting in you, uh, get help if you don't understand, but use it, right? Uh, build on it, grow in it. If we don't. Uh, we will lose it, right? Uh, consolidate, strengthen uh, uh, whatever we have. Where appropriate, we can document things. Uh, and uh, you will be learning on church administration also uh, in the final year uh, uh, on how to, you know, uh, have church administration and church ministry done. Uh, so you can learn more on consolidation there as well. Uh, then create and maintain revival culture the culture of revival to continue uh, you know the same way how it started off uh, it should not be something that is like a wind which comes and goes away but let it continue uh, uh, you know the revival culture is always god focused uh, the presence of god focused and not program focused right uh, uh, now Programs are important. I'm not saying we don't do events. We do a lot of events, right? It's important. But the reason we do those events is so that uh, the presence of God can minister to our lives and to people's lives as well. So a revival culture is one where we are full, yet we are hungry for more of God. We are blessed with all things, yet uh, uh, we are poor in spirit, meaning we are wanting more of him. Uh, is a, a revival culture is where we pray, worship, uh, and win souls and make disciples, and we are passionately eager to do more. Uh, and so even as we go about doing these things, I, uh, I know we have a little more left, but uh, we will stop here. We will, next Monday uh, will be our last class. And so we can wrap up. If we have questions. Uh, we can take questions as well. So uh, we'll, we'll stop here. Uh, we'll pick up from point nine from next week. Uh, and so let us all learn and desire to be good stewards of what God has given us. It may be the smallest thing, uh, but let's be good stewards. And God is pleased with that. Amen. So uh, any thoughts, any questions? Uh, if you have, uh, I will, I, what I'll do is uh, next Monday also, uh, after the class, I will post the assignment. Uh, uh, so we've divided the assignment to, I've personally made it to 50 and 50 marks, and then we will consolidate and uh, you'll be marked on 100. So, uh, all right. So uh, I put that on Monday after the class itself. So. Right. Any other questions, any thoughts, so we can close in prayer? Okay. So no questions, no thoughts. Okay. All right. I, I, I just I just have a thought. So thank, thank you, Pastor, again, for your teachings. They've been really inspiring. I, I just like that point you made about not being program-focused, but God-focused, because... Um, we're in a time and age whereby churches yeah. define um, church as the activities, conferences they hold in a year. Yeah. It's like people are losing focus of what's important, you know. Um, it's it, it, Those conferences are important. They empower believers, you know. But it's like we're stealing away the church from God to be more program focused and within the four walls of the church and we're not emphasizing on fellowship. We're not emphasizing on people reaching out to those who ought to, who, 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 who are in darkness, you know. Yeah. We're more yeah. about us, activity, making a name, you know, and all that. So I think that's very instructional, um, instructive rather, sorry, um, that we should be more God-focused. What is God saying in our season and time? What is he God telling us to do? Rather than we proposing what we ought to do, we should we should allow him be the one yeah. to dictate what we ought to do. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Say. Yes. Uh, 
that's that's very true uh you know even the times that we are in like for example even you know here in manglo when when we started off three and a half years ago we were just 10 people i thought god how are we going to get more people now i knew that you know any any church as for that sake uh, you know we have to do events right we have to do like worship evenings or youth meetings and then we tell our youth hey why don't you invite other youth uh, so nothing wrong about that uh, but here, uh, here what's important is our focus is not okay i want the church to become 100 people now if that is the focus and that is why we are doing the worship evening then we've got the whole thing wrong we got it all reverse right but the right thing to do is to say okay god i'm going to i'm praying i, I want people to experience you we want to be a blessing to the city and we will do this we are planning to do this worship evening you bring the people you bring and let the presence of god minister to them they may be hurting they may be going through different challenges uh, but let the presence of god minister to them uh, maybe next class i'll share with you a few things that happened to me personally uh, you know uh, and how from you know 10 people we are now about uh, about uh, 75 to 80 people in the church uh, uh, and how in just in span of about one and a half years, because it's been two, almost two years, you know, on and off with COVID. So in span of one and a half years, the Lord brought a lot of people within our community. And how did God do that? Uh, so probably I'll share that with you next class. Uh, 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 all right. All right. Uh, I think we're past time. You'll have to get to our, your next session. So um, uh, let's just quickly close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you. For this hour, Lord, we thank you for all that we are studying and all the learning of God. I pray, God, that you minister to each one of us, bless each and every student, even as they're learning through different courses over this semester, that your spirit will teach, impart, empower, and use them, Lord, for your glory, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Iman, thank you so much, everyone. We will catch up next week. Uh, have a great week ahead. God bless you all. God bless. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you. God bless.